All right, you guys, I'm back over at Blake's Tennessee Mountain Farm to pick up the piggies. Remember I showed you in a previous video all about his Korean natural farming piggery here, and we showed you the baby piglets. Well, they're now old enough to come to my farm. He has 50-50 Duroc and Mangalitsa, and then he has one that's a 75% Duroc, 25% Mangalitsa, so it'll be interesting to see how they both uh, grow out. Okay, okay. grab one leg, and I'll... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that was awesome. Good job. <laughs> that squeal. So in the last video, this section was not built yet that's for the piglets. So tell us why you set this up and, and how it's been working out. I built this area after going through two other births of pigs, farrowing of pigs on the farm. And I wanted to figure out how do I get myself away from those mamas and be able to grab the babies pretty safe. And that's where, if you look up here, I just cut a hole big enough into a cattle panel so the babies can hop through. We'll see if some of them will come down through here. They might hear the dinner bell and come on down. But the mamas Mama wants to. can't go through. Right. Um, and so <clears throat> this right here is sort of a building of an area uh, that I had in my mind to be able to get babies down here. And most time you get them hungry, you can trap them in here. Then I have a little gate that I just swing down over that. Perfect. And then I can work the babies for whatever I need. Uh, sorting them out to sell, uh, to move has been super handy because the moms can't get to you. Yep. And we just, yeah, we just we did just it. And, it, and it was really nice. Yeah, Cause when so they easy. start screaming, everybody goes on high alert, but mm -hmm. they, they cannot get through that hole. And so it's been very, very nice to be able to have this to, to move and manage baby pigs in an effective way. Okay guys, so we're here with the pigs. I got their water here, their food here I've been fermenting, and of course I've got all my Korean natural farming stuff in there. The other thing I wanted to mention about where they're grazing, they are going to be in the woods, but because we are coming out of winter right now, I actually want to have them go right over this area where is going to be a future greenhouse area. It's very brambly. I love them for them to dig up some of that before the plants wake up. Um, it's very compacted, very hard. It drains extremely well, um, but I would like to get some disturbance on this before the whole briar patch comes back to life space. And what I did is I set up two of my nets here. Um, they don't really need two nets worth of space because they're still pretty small, but I want them to have as much area as possible so they don't get freaked out. They should be a little bit, you know, sensitive in the beginning until they get used to me. I don't want them to freak out and run into the fence. Now, Blake did train them to electric, so I'm not expecting them to freak out and run into the fence and have a disaster, but I want to take all the precautions that I can. And now if I wanted to be extremely safe, I would back my whole truck up inside of here, close the gate, make the gate hot, then let them out, and then, you know, have my wife turn it off and then we open the gate and go out. Come on, pig. There you go. Well, that was a total disaster. That definitely a flashback from when I got the sheep and they escaped too. And But you know what? If you're raising animals and this happen, hasn't happened to you yet, you just haven't been doing it long enough. This will happen eventually. I'm actually glad it happened so I can show you guys and tell you what happened. So it was actually the, the smaller pig is the one that got out and I actually watched it walked through my hog netting. I actually don't have piglet netting. I thought that this would hold them just fine, but it didn't, unfortunately. So what we did is we just put uh, in some step in posts and then did a single line. So there's an extra line in front that they're going to touch first before they even get to the net so that they'll get shocked. And we're gonna finish up some of their uh, hotline training here. So to give you guys some more advice and to myself for the future, basically you just kinda gotta go overboard with the pigs, put way more protection um, and, and netting than even you think you're gonna need. The other solution would be to have the piglet netting and what my friend Kyle Bellaforce Fed Farm did he put a ton of step in posts. So basically in between each of the posts, he had another step in post for extra strength. So if they did ram it, they would just be stopped and they couldn't actually burst through. So the pigs are safe, everything's good. They got everything they need, their food, their water. They're not even really gonna want to get out of here unless maybe I scare them, but they're gonna get more used to me as I come in here every single day to feed them. Um, and then we'll do our first move together and then we'll be best buddies and won't be any more issues. So, you know, just a few growing pains here in the beginning. 
So behind me here are my two American black bellies. These were just weaned, they're about four months old. And I got these because my buddy Blake over at Tennessee Mountain Farm, he wanted to get some sheep for his farm and that was the breed that he wanted to get. And uh, they had a few extra sheep, so I said, hey, why not let's throw a couple more in there because I wanted to try some other breeds. And I'm trying to find two Katahdins as well to throw in because I think that's gonna help me learn a lot more if I can crossbreed a bunch of these different breeds or just see how they interact and what the differences are. Cause I know with raising chickens that really helped me to understand chickens better and figure out what breeds I like the best. So far they've been awesome sheep. Uh, the first day we dropped them off, it took them a couple days to get acclimated. And uh, actually it was funny, the white sheep, the St. Croix were more scared of the new babies than they were of them. The babies were following them around and the St. Croix just kept running away. But after about two days, they all integrated. And now, as you can see, they're just hanging out together. So if you saw my other videos about raising these sheep, um, how I'm setting up my nets, all of that system is working fantastic for me. And I was able to graze these sheep over this field for the winter and I did not have to feed any extra hay. So that was really amazing. Uh, to go through that process and know that it is possible here where I live. And the reason that I am doing so much more, I'm putting in the seven acre fence is because I've decided that I am gonna move forward with using sheep uh, as a farm business here. Um, there are just so many benefits to using them. And because I just have 16 acres and not that much pasture, it just doesn't make sense to have a couple cows out here when I can have a lot more sheep uh, and I really enjoy the sheep as well and I get to do breeding with them and, and there's just so much more that I can do. Whereas with cows, I don't wanna to have to deal with a bull and there's just so much more, you know, they're more dangerous, they're larger. Uh, processing them is more difficult. You need a trailer to take them to the processor. These sheep can all be processed and dealt with here on my own land. I, you know, I, my little Tacoma, I can move a couple of sheep where I need to put them if I have to transport them or sell them. So for me, being a much smaller farm here, it makes more sense for me to do these animals. And then so far on this fence, we're almost ready to put in the wire. We've got all our age braces and corners and the gates are figured out. Um, it's been a huge process figuring out where everything should go, but I've got it all mapped out now. A um, few more age braces and corners to do, and then we can actually run the wire. And then this will be much easier to manage these sheep and I can get a little bit better sleep at night knowing that they are totally protected in a perimeter fence. So right behind me was just forestry mulched a couple days ago. It is incredible. I just constantly blown away by what these machines can do. This is probably like two and a half acres, maybe three acres, something like that. And this is all going to be fenced in. You can actually see the posts right there. That's part of the corner H brace that we're building. What this forestry mulcher was able to do for me was clear all this so that a lot of light can now penetrate the canopy and hit the ground so that I can put grass here. So the plan for this is today we're going to get the pigs and we're going to start the pigs in this area. This is going to be their future home for their whole life. And they're going to help me plant perennial grasses and fertilize all of this land before I bring my sheep here in the future. So I plan on getting, you know, some orchard grass, maybe fescue, clover, some, you know, some things like that that are perennial. So this technique is called silvopasturing, uh, which when you're combining trees, grasses and then animals all in a system together. And this is something I've read about for 10 years probably. It's something I've wanted to do and, and experience for a really long time. So I finally get to do it. And even on my own land, it's just such a blessing. So I'm excited to show you guys this technique. I, this is such an ultimate awesome technique, I think, where you bring in, you bring in a forestry mulcher, which that cost me um, $1,500, $150 an hour. He worked for 10 hours and you know, this is all the work that he got done in that time. So it's fantastic. I could never do that much work uh, if I did this by hand. And I know that $1,500 sounds expensive, but imagine if you had to pay yourself 20 to $30 an hour to clear it to this level. Um, it would cost yourself way more than $1,500 and you wouldn't get the benefit of all this mulch that's laid down onto the ground. And he even destroyed some of these older rotting logs. He's able to mulch those up onto the ground um, and get that ready so that when the pigs come in, as they root, they poop, they pee, these wood chips are gonna convert like that into amazing soil. Instead of like last year where I did the barley, that was just an annual, just a quick cover crop to get something in the ground. This is gonna be permanent. So the pigs will plant, will move on, they'll never come back here and the grass will grow and, I'm, and within a year, I should have sheep here. So it's gonna expand my pasture from 
the four acres all the way to this um, now civil pasture wooded area 